Welcome to the Sunshine State Rails, the Florida Railroad Museum, and the rebirth of the 8330. The 8330 is an EMD GP10 and it was acquired by the museum in the late 2000s, from which point it pulled most of their museum excursions up until 2018 when a mechanical failure halted its excursion runs and put it on the sidelines for almost four years. We're currently in the museum's Willow Maintenance and Storage Yard and the 8330 currently sits behind me because as of now, September 2022, they're finally getting the money and time to invest into this locomotive and try to get it back on their mainline excursion trains. So behind me is the start of what will likely be a multiple month long process of getting this thing back up to speed and back on the museum rails. So with that said, why exactly has the 8330 been sidelined for so long? Well, every year in December, the museum runs their annual North Pole Express event where they decorate the Willow Yard and everybody can come out and have an hour or two of fun with Santa Claus and a bunch of other Christmas festivities. However, the 2018 runs of that event for this locomotive wasn't so pretty. The 8330 is a model GP10 and inside it is an EMD 645 prime mover that contains 16 cylinders and on one of the museum's North Pole Express runs while the train was coming north with 8330 being towed in the rear, two of those cylinders were badly damaged. One of the cylinders exploded, damaging another and potentially bending the crankcase inside the locomotive. Now, to this day, the museum doesn't exactly know why the cylinder exploded. There are a few theories as to why, one of the most popular being that water was leaking from the radiator inside of the cylinder, causing it to overpressurize and then explode completely, although the blast damaged a second piston and potentially bent that crankcase. Now, blowing a cylinder and damaging another is one thing. Those two can be replaced, however, the crankcase is the biggest issue here because inside the EMD Prime Mover, the crankcase is essentially this huge metal rod that runs the length of the engine that turns all the gears to turn the locomotive wheels. And if that's bent, it can't turn straight and therefore can't turn the wheels. The museum actually doesn't know if the crank is bent or not, but from the way that they say it vibrates, it leads them to believe that it has been bent. And after an explosion of almost two cylinders, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if it was bent. So because of priorities and financial situations, the museum simply had the locomotive sidelined and out of service for almost four years since that 2018 incident. But as of this recording, September 17th, 2022 today, the NDP 30 is sitting behind me with almost all of the locomotive doors open as this is pretty much the start to what's gonna be a few months of processing to get this locomotive back up and running. And so with that said, the museum's solution to what has happened is to simply replace the entire prime mover in 8330. They actually have the new EMD motor down at the other end of this yard sitting on a flatbed under a tarp that's set to go into 8330 within the next couple of months. They're essentially going to pull the locomotive shell off of the long hood of 8330, pull the original EMD 645 out, and put this new EMD 567C block engine into 8330. This new engine is also 16 cylinders, so once it's inside the 30, it should solve pretty much all their problems. New cylinders, new crankcase, whole nine yards. So with that and a few other mechanical upgrades like some air valve replacements and a repaint, which they're actually still kind of in the dark with what they want to do with, NDP 30 should be ready to get back on the main line and pull some trains again. And I know that for a lot of people, myself included growing up, 8330 was one of the most iconic locomotives that you could see running at this place. So it's definitely gonna be a really historical event to see this thing back on the rails once they finally get it all done. Now for some of you, this might raise questions as to whether putting a different EMD Prime Mover in 8330 as a GP10 will actually work. But consider for a second that train locomotives are simply metal shells with a Prime Mover inside. So forget for a second that 8330 is a GP10 and simply consider it a machine with a metal shell and an engine inside. Really it doesn't matter what engine you put in there, as long as it's wired correctly and everything works, it'll run the engine. And as long as your crankcase ain't bent, those gears will turn and those wheels will spin. The only real difference between what will be this new 8330 and say the old 8330 is that with this new 567 prime mover going in here, and as the 567 was the predecessor to the EMD 645, there will be about a 250 horsepower loss between this EMD 645 and the transition to the 567 C block. 
Though, as the museum folks have made clear, with the trains that these guys run, that will be no problem. And to get a new engine like that in here will be more beneficial than almost anything else. And over the course of the next few months, I am going to be following this locomotive's restoration with help from the museum employees and volunteers. And whatever series of videos that that ends up making for my channel will end out to be my end of 2022 series, Rebirth of the 8330. Again, today is September 17th, 2022, and this project might be delayed because right now the museum is actually focusing on some other projects like cabooses. They actually got a very old one in here that they got some new material in, and that they're actually planning on painting. They have it in gray primer right now, but they're gonna paint it into the orange SCL scheme. I'll probably have an example picture off to the side here somewhere, but that and their other cabooses, they're kind of retrofitting and fixing up and repainting. They actually got their Mopac caboose repainted and that's in the shop here. That looks really good. Also at the other end of the yard, they have their GE 44 ton switcher that was originally a Navy owned locomotive and the Navy actually has given them permission to repaint that engine into the Navy scheme with the Navy numbers. So that should be coming here fairly soon as well. And also the High Hood Jeep 7 1835 delivered to the museum in 1995 was actually an ex US Army engine and the Army has also given them permission to repaint it back into its original US Army scheme. So whenever that comes around, that'll also be real interesting to see. But over the course of the next few months, the rebirth of the 8330 will be right here in Willow, and I'm gonna do my best to try and stick around the side of that project and document it as best I can, because this was one of the most iconic pieces at this museum for myself and others growing up. So be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to this channel for the upcoming updates for this locomotive and the rest of the Florida Museum fleet as we near the end of 2022. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time, whether here or somewhere else, on the Sunshine State Rails.